Hi, everyone. Um, we'll go to Sky Sports News, please. Uh, is it Ben? Yeah, that's right. Good afternoon. Yeah, thank, thank you. you, Ben Manson. Um, Roy, the first half, you carved out some decent opportunities. The difference between the sides appeared to be the, uh, the finishing. Um, second half was slightly different. How did you see the game? Yes, pretty much like that. I don't know quite what you're referring to by the second half being different. It was obviously going to be very different in the second half when you're 1-0 down against Liverpool and you find it very hard to get back into the game and to prevent them from hurting you on the counter-attack or preventing them from hurting you when they have the ball in good positions. When you're 3-0 down and you're going out in the second half, it's going to get even harder. But we we decided to keep trying to have a go at them and, and, and keep trying to, to, to get some pressure. But of course, all that does open you up to some extent on the, on the counter-attack if you're not successful. And uh, you know, even one of those goals in the second half was a, a counter-attacking goal. Um, but there's really there's nothing I can say. I mean, there's nothing positive I can say. I, I'm, we're humiliated by the result. There's no question of that. We we take it very very badly. For most of us in the dressing room, we've not been on the end of a seven 0 defeat before, so it's a new experience. And quite frankly, I sitting here in front of you now, I can't think of anything positive to say at all. We just have to come over it because that's what everyone has to do. There's no point in dwelling on it any longer than we really have to. We have to learn some lessons from it and uh, I'm sure we will. Is it one of those days where in some respects you're glad the fans weren't there at Sellers Park? Well, most of them are our fans would have seen it on the television. So if they'd have been here, of course, it would <laughs> made it maybe slightly worse, but I, I'm not certain that that makes such a vast difference. Thank you. Okay, if you'd like a question, can you use the emoji, please? And make yourself known with the George Sessions at PA. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, this is all that I saw today. Did Gary Cahill get, get injury at the end there? Or was that, um, yeah. was, was he, was he no, it's a bit frustrating because we did ask him on many occasions if his hamstring was okay but he kept ensuring sure, us that he was okay and could carry on but then in the last 10 minutes he felt it even more and of course we had to sort of push him up front and labour on with 10 men but um, again one of those things I suppose that's going to happen in a game of football sometimes and there's so much more for me to ponder and concern myself with and to be to be very very sad about today than worrying about whether Gary should have come off or not. And just, uh, I guess, a slightly more positive note, at least James Tonkin was back on the pitch. I think his first experience since February, so pleased that he was out there. He will be in a, uh, in a bad day. George, you'd have to ask that question again because I was losing you. It was breaking up. I was saying, Gary, um, obviously bad for Gary, but James Tompkins was, was back. Nice to nice to, for him to get back on the pitch after such a long time. Yeah, we didn't, you know, we really, I mean, Czechs played all the games. I mean, I, I, I rested Gary on Wednesday so that he'd be fresh today. Uh, didn't work out due to the hamstring problem. But to Czech would have been the one that comes off to give James Tompkins a chance to get some first-team football, which is something he badly needs. And... I'm pleased that he's had that chance to get those 30 minutes under his belt and I hope it's going to help him going forward to get his full fitness and match fitness back up to speed. Thank you. We'll go to Dan King, Sunday Sun. Hi, Roy. I know you covered this a bit in your first answer, but it, it struck me that really if, if you'd scored the first goal in the second half, then there'd been enough encouragement in the first half for you to think you know, there was plenty still in that. In that game for you, did you did you feel that as well? Well, <laughs> grateful for the positive, you know, approach really, and of course I'm very tempted to jump on the back of that and say yes, but I'm still sitting here trying to come to terms with nothing with the fact that we've just been beaten seven goals still at home, albeit by a very good team, etc., etc., etc. But it doesn't change the fact that. That's the first ever 7 0 defeat I've, I've suffered, and that goes for very many people in that dressing room. And I'm afraid we're going to have to go through a little day or two of grieving at least, and that might 
who vent me trying to find too many positive things to say. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Jean Sylvester on, in the uh, Morning Star. Hi, Roy. Um, yeah, I just wanted to get your thoughts on 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 what you think was the main difference uh, from last week's performance because it was really spirited performance by the boys last week against Spurs. And um, what do you think? What do you think was the difference today? Well, one of the major differences is the fact they scored after two minutes, and they're a top team that you know you're going to have to work very hard to do something against if you want to get any points from the game. So when you're one goal to nil down, you've 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 started to build that little mountain for yourself. And the third goal, of course, exacerbated that. I don't know that there was any vast difference in our attitude or our desire or our wanting to do well, but three and a half time, we, we came out in the second half trying hard to get that goal back, which might give us some hope, but they got it instead. And as a result, you really do have a mountain to climb then, and we couldn't climb it. Okay, um, Matt Wisdom from The Athletic, please. Hi, Roy. Um, I realised sort of you said earlier that you, know, uh, you don't think it would have made too much difference with fans, but um, with the game against West Brom, it was the first time that you scored five in the, in the top flight, that Palace scored five in the top flight, so it's a record, and obviously a record today, an unwanted record, but do you think it's natural that without fans to pick the team up in a difficult moment, it becomes harder to stop that acceleration, um, you know, with the West Brom game, you know, the West Brom fans not being there, for example, and then today, you know, do you think your players might have responded to something from the fans? That's a good question. I mean, it's one of those questions that no one can ever really know. Um, I know one thing, it was fans or no fans, when you go 3-0 down at half time against Liverpool, in a game where, quite frankly, they haven't actually been bombarding your goal or swarming your penalty area. But when you do go 3-0 down, you know with the way they play, the, the, the clinical finishing, the, the speed of the counter-attacks, you know that this could be dangerous because we want to try and get back in the game. We want to get back in the game by trying to play some of the football we played in the first half, which didn't look half bad. Um, but... If other goals go in, you are staring down the barrel of a gun and looking at something as humiliating as a 7-0 defeat. And that's exactly what happened to us. Whether the fans could have helped us along a bit, I don't know. Uh, I'm sure they'd have tried. But uh, sometimes games escape both the team and the fans. And I think this is one of them. And you said that you know, there's going to be a grieving period, but... What do you even say to your players? What, or well, not necessarily, but you know, how do you respond to that? That you know, a heavy defeat like that. You haven't had it in your career. What, what is there that you can do to make that better? In the interim, the only thing I can say to that is certainly no magic wand. Every player's got to to come to terms with it. He's got to go home and accept that this has happened to us and it's something we didn't want to happen and are very, very devastated by the fact that it's happened. And then on Tuesday, we've got to find a way of learning a lesson from it, making certain that any of the things that we have done today that have definitely got to be changed, get changed, and also to learn a few lessons from the way Liverpool play the game, because we're more than capable of doing some of the things that they do in terms of their movement, in terms of their running behind defenders. The fact they're always looking to play a a long ball behind your defence to stretch you out. There are things that we can do as well, and I, I'm, I'm sure we'll be thinking about that. Thanks, Roy. Pleasure. OK, we'll finish with Joe Doyle at Football London, please. Hi, Roy. Um, I just wanted to ask um, about Christian Benteke's absence. Um, how did you feel that Jordan Ayew did in his place? They're very different players. You know, I don't wish to make any comparisons there. I think uh, Christian against his old club would have been very useful for us to have today, not least of all with his ability in the air and his ability to act as a target player. But Jordan, as he always does, works very hard, tries his very, very best in both positions that he played in the, in the game. And I'm not at all uh, critical of his performance. Uh, 
and I'm not prepared to make comparisons between him and Christian because they're very different players. I would have liked to have had Christian today and Christian would have loved to have played today, but uh, it wasn't to be due to the sending off. Okay, I think that's it. I can't see any more uh, hands up, so we'll leave it there. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.